Hello again. This is the final segment on our series on taxation. I've had as my guest in the past two weeks Charles Davenport, Chuck Davenport, professor of law at Rutgers University, and David Milstein, who's manager of the tax department at Coopers and Libran in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, fellas, there are, there are many new concepts that seem to be somewhat, national, uh, uh, somewhat fashionable, and terms are tossed around which I, I think are new to many taxpayers and many average consumers. For example, now we hear terms like flat tax, we hear terms like value, value added tax, we hear tossing out all deductions and just having a, a simple tax across the board that affects everybody. What's happening? Are, are the, could, this significant, could this really come about? And what are these terms? Uh, I'll start, if I may, on the flat tax. Uh, it's not really clear always what the flat tax means, but what most people think of it meaning is a tax which has uh, much lower rates, at least at the top, uh, from what we now have, and also on which uh, a bigger percentage of income is subject to tax. So that uh, that, that sounds like it would cost us more money then. Well, uh, not if you lower the rates. Uh, the, the consequence of lowering rates, while you're broadening the basis, is you may raise uh, exactly the same amount of revenue. And the question is, is do you is you probably would shift it uh, between certain people? For instance, uh, although I guess the Bradley <coughs> and Gephardt, Senator Bradley, um, and uh, from New Jersey. Yeah, from New Jersey. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Their bill would continue to allow the uh, deduction of taxes and interest for homes, but it would do away with most of the other things that people have uh, used to uh, the personal deductions. And the consequence is those who have been taking large personal deductions might be paying more, uh, while those who haven't been taking large personal deductions might not be paying more, might be paying less. You don't know until you see the structure of the act itself. It's a, uh, it's a concept which has appeal to a lot of people on, on the surface, uh, especially this time of year when people are doing or have just completed their tax returns. Uh, the promise of a simple tax system is like a breath of, uh, you know, or a breath of spring air coming, coming through the window. Uh, however, we're dealing in a, in a complex society, and I'm not sure a, a simple flat tax uh, is necessarily going to work, or at least right away work, in, in a society, an economic society like we have here. Uh, there already is, in the Internal Revenue Code, a provision which is akin to a flat tax, that is a minimum tax. And I, I believe that every uh, major piece of legislation we have in the tax area keeps on strengthening the minimum tax and bringing more people into the tax paying net. And perhaps rather than a pure flat tax, you may continue to see a strengthening of the minimum tax. Now the enthusiasm for a flat tax uh, tends to dissipate when people see uh, what we call uh, distribution tables, that is who's going to pay the tax because um, it's nice to talk about a nice, uh, simple tax, but when uh, a lot of people see that they're going to be paying more, uh, and they simply have to, if you're going to raise the same amount of revenue, while a lot of others are paying less, uh, those who are paying more, which would probably, under most schemes, uh, be the larger part of the population, it may uh, not be looked at as quite so, quite so favorable. What you're saying then is that the people at the bottom of the pyramid would be paying more, and some of the people at the very top would be paying a little less. Can, uh, Hypothetically, in, in, most, in most of the flat taxes that have been proposed, uh, that is almost uh, by necessity follows. Mm -hmm. Because they're trying to raise the same amount of revenue and have uh, a somewhat lower rate. And that, uh, that simply means that there's some of that income at the top isn't going to be taxed as much and uh, it has to be raised someplace. The, the flat tax concept is really twofold, I believe. Oh, the purpose is twofold. One is simplification uh, and the other is a form of equity. Uh, simplification clearly has merit, uh, and to discuss it today is going to maybe last for four days. It's just so, <laughs> so complex. Uh, right. As far as equity uh, goes, uh, I believe the, the flat tax proponents uh, maybe mislead the public. Uh, there are many people uh, who have high net worths who pay little in taxation because of the types of investments they are in. But even if those people were taxed at a fairly high rate, that would not necessarily help the people at the bottom that much, because there are so many people at the lower levels and so few at the upper levels. And when you start distributing around, it's not going to make that much of an impact at the bottom. Mm, I, I think we have about four or five minutes left on this segment. Uh, you said simplification would take us four days to talk about. Could you take a minute or two and just touch on that? Why is simplification so complex and difficult? Well, it's difficult because of the political <coughs> process. And the truth of the matter is nobody wants simplification. Uh, 
or anybody who wants it, it's always the number two item on the agenda and something else is number one. And uh, so they go for number one and they may either win or lose on number one. But nobody is very serious about simplification. Uh, it's, uh, it's a nice thing to talk about. No politician, no band of citizens, nobody is serious. And also, uh, at one point in time, uh, everybody, not everybody, but a majority of Congress voted for every provision that is in the tax code now. And simplification would require an unvoting of each of those provisions. And just like there were special interest groups or valid reasons for those provisions to come in, uh, those reasons have to be refuted now to get them out. And that would take a long, a long drawn out uh, period of time. One of, one of the very obvious things is that whenever there's any change of tax policy, being considered in Washington, there's a tremendous uh, lobbying and horse trading and, and, and hassling and negotiating that, that just springs up immediately. Um, I, I heard recently that the, the IRS and Congress, I guess, did something to tax waiters. They had a formula where they could tax the tips of waiters, rather. Gosh, the trade associations come run in. There's equity on this side and lack of equity on that side, and, and now the underground economy. We're trying to tack, we're trying to tackle the underground economy, but we're imposing all types of, of uh, arbitrary things. Well, the waiters tax isn't a new tax. Uh -huh. uh, it's a you know tips have always been income. They've always been subject to tax. Yeah, but now they're, and they're the trying to. The perception was that people weren't the waiters weren't reporting that, and uh, what that provision does is to provide a formula which will allocate a certain percentage of uh, the sales and just presume that that is a tip. I hear our tax system is a voluntary tax system. I hear that in the United States we are the admiration of the world in terms of our ability to collect taxes. Uh, well, our system is a voluntary system. The law simply compels uh, taxpayers to file tax returns. And um, I don't think that that's that's voluntary. It's voluntary in the sense that people sit down and you know comply with the law, but uh, the compliance is best where voluntarism is the least, and that's in wage withholding. I don't think you're suggesting that people not file because it's voluntary. Oh no, no, hard. Oh no, 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 absolutely not. No, but a, a person in the tax code, a person could decide, a businessman could decide to spend more money in one area, thereby reduces tax. It's true he's trying to do that for an economic reason, sure, but. But that's not what they mean when they talk about voluntary compliance. What do they mean by voluntary they mean, they compliance? They mean that the, tax, that the taxpayer has the duty, and most people do it, of sitting down and computing and saying, assessing themselves. When you send in your return, you're saying to the federal government, I owe you that amount of money. And uh, in, most, uh, you know, in other words, you assess it yourself. You make that a legal liability by making the statement. And that's, I think, what they mean when they talk about uh, As compared to in some countries where a tax man comes down to your place of business or to your home and uh, looks through uh, your, oh. your, your records and tells you what you oh, owe, collects see. the money. At Here that I am. Time. Here's what I want from yes. you. Or your property tax, which is not a self-assessment system. You know, the assessor comes along and says your property has this value, and, right. and this much tax is, is due. Yeah, Dave, uh, you might touch. We we have a brief period of time, but you might touch as a CPA. As a, you have an obligation to be a part of the compliance. When you, when you sign a return, you're doing certain police work in effect for the government as well. Well, we're not really uh, doing police work for the government. We are uh, merely representing that what is shown on the return is, is appropriate. And we are representing our clients. Is accurate. The appropriate and, and accurate. And, accurate. and we are and representing factual. our clients and making sure they do not get into any penalty uh, situations with respect to positions taken on the return and that things are properly uh, reflected on the return. Uh -huh. Well, fellows, we're almost at the, the end of the segment. Every time I, I have people like you ex with expertise and resource, resource people, uh, I feel we, I wish we had more time. So I hope perhaps we can get together again. I know, Chuck, you work in Newark, but you're on sabbatical now, and you live in McLean, Virginia. <laughs> so it's a, a long way to get you back here. Dave, thank you for being with me. Thank Both you, of you, thank you be, for being with me. I hope we'll be back on The Money Corner next week. We'll start a new series. Have a good weekend. I'll be back with you again next week on The Money Corner. <laughs>